Finally, I've been waiting years for this. Sound Toys has finally released their Super Plate plugin. And with five different plate emulations, three preamp saturation options, and all the goodies you'd expect from Sound Toys hiding in the tweak menu, including one insanely cool feature I don't think I've ever seen before. This thing does not disappoint. So let's throw Super Plate onto a vocal and hear what the five different plates sound like. And this song we're using is by Alexandra Grace. I'll link to her music down in the description if you want to check it out. I drink in those healing eyes of honey and green tea They seep their way through all the scars and bruises left on me Like when your throat is sore, a little warmth is all you need To be ready to sing again a happy melody I drink in those healing eyes of honey and green tea. Some really cool options there. For this application, I just love how the classic 140 setting sounds. I used to work at a studio that had an actual EMT 140 plate, which is what this setting is based on. And I absolutely love the way that thing sounded. But an actual EMT 140 is about the size of an upright piano and probably weighs about as much as well. So having one here at my home studio is not exactly the most practical option. But luckily, the 140 setting in Superplate really does capture the sound and vibe I remember from the real thing. I have a ton of plate reverb plugins many of which I really, really like. But as soon as I turned this one on, I just had like a emotional connection with it, as dumb as that sounds. It just felt like I was back working with the real thing again. I'm guessing a part of that character comes from the preamp modeling in Superplate. Actual plate reverbs have a preamp to drive the signal into the actual sheet of metal that creates the reverb. Sound Toys gave us three different options as far as this preamp goes. They modeled both a tube and a transistor-based preamp from various EMT plates, and they gave us a clean option, which basically bypasses the preamp, giving you the cleanest signal into the reverb. Let's hear what these different preamp options sound like. I'm gonna solo up the reverb and I'll drive the input into Superplate a little bit to make the differences more obvious and really listen on the words honey and where she digs in a little bit. With the tube option, we were getting a fair bit of saturation, especially where she pushes a little bit. The transistor setting was my favorite for this particular track. It still has some saturation, but much less than the tube setting. But it's got a lot of compression happening, which really helps to smooth out the reverb in a really pleasing way. The clean setting was really nice too, and I can see how that would be useful at times. But for this track, I really like the extra grit and vibe the other two offer. Let's jump over to the piano in this track to talk about some of the other features of Superplate. Here, I used the Stocktronic setting. This one felt a little too sizzly on the vocal, but it added some some nice air to the top of the dark piano sound. So let's hear that and play around with the decay knob a bit. Yeah, that's fun. The first half of the knob are the settings you'd be able to dial in on an actual plate, between about half a second and five seconds or so. But as Sound Toys typically does, they kicked it up a notch and expanded on what's possible with the real thing, giving us much, much longer decay options, and even an infinite decay. These longer settings can be a lot of fun for creating cool textural pads, and by playing into it, they can be a really inspiring compositional tool. Next, let's look at the modulation knob. An actual plate doesn't have any modulation, so if you're going for the ultimate in realism, you can leave that off. But dialing a little bit in can add some subtle movement which helps to smooth things out and reduce resonances in the reverb. Cranking it up further adds some gorgeous chorusing effects, which can sound really nice, especially with super long decays. Now let's hear Superplate on acoustic guitar to check out the filtering and EQ sections. Here I'm using the gold foil 240 setting with a pretty short decay. The 240 felt a little bit more upfront and a little smaller, which helped to give the guitar its own space without getting in the way or blurring things too much for the vocal. First, I'll play it without the filters engaged and you'll notice it sounds kind of muddy and boomy. Then I'll dial in the low cut until things clear up. In 
this case, I ended up rolling off everything below about 250 hertz. By the way, if you didn't know, if you control click on a knob in any Sound Toys plugin, it'll give you the numerical readout of what you have it set to. So that's sounding a lot better now, but I do think we could use a little more EQ. For that, we can open up the tweak menu where we have a little more control over our filters with three selectable slopes and two bands of parametric EQ. In this case, I wanna pull out a little bit more mud in the lower mids and maybe add just a touch of sparkle in the top end. That's much better. I love that they included this EQ section. For this particular track, I have all my reverbs on sends, so it wouldn't really be a big deal to throw an EQ after my reverb, but there are a lot of times where I'll throw a reverb plugin directly onto a track and just use the mix knob to mix it in. So being able to shape the sound inside the plugin is incredibly useful to me. And I saved the best for last year. Let's go back to our vocal and check out my favorite and by far the most unique feature of this plugin, the auto decay. This basically lets you control the length of the reverb based on the level of the input signal. If that doesn't quite make sense yet, let's talk about one instance where you might want to use it, and then I think it'll make more sense. Something I often do with vocals is reverb throws. I'll send just the last word or syllable of a line into a long reverb, which helps the vocal more smoothly fade out and helps kind of fill in the gap a little bit before the next line comes in. We can use the auto decay in Superplate to do something very similar to that automatically for us. I currently have the decay knob set around three seconds, so that's what I'm going to set the target knob to. The target knob is basically what we want our decay time to be while the singing is happening. Now we can bring the main decay knob up so that when she stops singing, the decay time will increase, filling the gap. Then to get this working, we just need to pull down the threshold. And in this case, I don't really want the decay time bouncing around as she's singing. I just want it to be short when she's singing and then long when she's not. So I'll just drop the threshold all the way down for this example. Then I'll just lengthen the release a tiny bit to make the transition a little smoother and we're set. I'll start with a decay time way too long, just so you can see exactly what it's doing, and then I'll bring it back to something a little bit more realistic. I drink in those healing eyes of honey and green tea. They seep their way through all the scars and bruises left on me. Like when your throat is sore, a little warmth is all you need. Another cool use of this could be if you had a guitar or a piano or something that was playing a bunch of held out chords with occasional little licks or lead lines mixed in. You could have a kind of medium long decay set for the held out chords, but then when the busier parts come in, the auto decay could shorten the reverb length quite a bit, keeping it from getting muddy over those parts. If you wanna check out how I like to use five other amazing Sound Toys plugins, check out this video. Or if you wanna see how ridiculously versatile Sound Toys Echo Boy is, check out this one. And if you wanna try Super Played Out for yourself, there's a link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.